Hello everyone, uh, Rajdeep here uh, and uh, I thank you for coming and watching the video today. Uh, this is in continuation to a series of uh, video webinars that uh, we at Blue Dots Consultancy Services would be doing in the coming months or so. Uh, primarily because we get a lot of requests from clients and companies as well as students in order to understand certain facets of the business we, we deal in as well as uh, the knowledge uh, dissemination that we talk about. Now this is going to be a continuous continuity so you can understand from the video I'm not going to do any editing and all that so it's going to be a flow of my thoughts and all that. So we will try to do it every fortnightly one video and uh, parting into information technology which can range from um, you know design and services uh, to engineering professional which seems to be support function. So the first topic that we have decided to take up comes from a client of ours and a couple of my students have asked me this question. That how do we map job requirements with DELC? Basically they want to understand how do we assess uh, the requirements that we, rec uh, that we record or we uh, come across in technical writing with the documentation development lifecycle. How do we do that? So let's just go ahead and see what we meant by DDLC. So most of you are aware of it, but DDLC is uh, a large part of my LinkedIn community. We have people coming in from the technical publication industry, so they are pretty aware of what DDLC is. But for those who may or may not know, as part of the software development lifecycle, we also integrate DDLC in the implementation phase. So you're talking about understand requirements, then we talk about design, then develop, review, finalize, publish, and of course, I have not mentioned maintenance, but that's a part of it. Now, as a technical writer, in this entire document development life cycle, understand requirements is going to be my first priority, and that's why I have put this up over here. Now, below, you can take a look into the job description, and what I have done is I have taken a sample job that for, for, from a client of mine which is into telecom network and um, software related media. Now job description here matches this three to five years of work experience that we are talking about here. So the client wants anyone who has got at least three years of solid document documentation experience and when I talk about documentation experience they are looking out for people who have worked in enterprise system, software enterprise system. So first thing first, the, the, the problem out here is that I get a lot, we get a lot of resumes come from aeronautical or mechanical domain. So for those of you who sends out resume from that particular domain, we might have to, even if you are from that aircraft domain, we would like to see that if you meet documentation of at least three plus years of experience in enterprise system. If it's a go, even if you are from aeronautical domain, we would still have a look at it. All right. Now, first point is, of course, we have not put up the entire job requirement, largely because we think that uh, you know the the uh, because of the fact that we have just put up the key points out here. So, one is create installation, operation, and maintenance manual. I'm not going to go through what all these manuals are, but the first priority, and this is the top-notch priority for the client, the person should be good enough to understand requirements that are actually associated, that is a technical writer should be able to know how to under, what goes in an installation manual, should be able to talk to the SMEs, should be able to do an estimation all over here and then based on the time and scale of estimation should be able to do it for largely for installation operation and maintenance manual. And then what happens is that what we do in understand requirement is that after we talk to the SME getting the points that we want to actually write in or we create a uh, you know, sort of a TOC or we understand the document requirements that get in, we actually go to the design phase wherein we create a TOC, which is a logical hierarchy of the information that we want to actually put it across the documents that we are talking about. So TOC, as you know, is a large scale which we have headings and the corresponding page number that will act as a pointer to your main information. 
So now I am talking about installation manual, operation, and maintenance manual. So from the resumes that I screening, the first and foremost this thing is that whenever you are writing a resume or when you are sending across a resume, go through the job description. We come up across a lot many times when a person, and I understand that uh, people are in a hurry these days to actually just go and submit. But most of the times when we call up the people and we say that uh, we use LinkedIn a lot, so we, when we tell them that we sourced your profile or you sent it across LinkedIn, they often tell that, oh, I don't remember, I don't remember the job description and all that, blah, blah, blah. So it is very important for you to at least read through the JD. So my first comment is that do you have experience in these three categories? Now, why? Because when I send across the resumes to client, I often actually have something called skill set. In this skill set, for example, for uh, a software developer, at automation, selling an automation tester and all that, their skill set may be HTML, C sharp, selling your automation and all that. For a technical writer, I try to put the kind of manuals that you work in. Why do I do that? Because it lets the client know that you are basically sending me resumes which match the skill set that we have. So out of the 50 resumes that I will get, I can vouch and tell you that I will get at least 8 or more, less than 8 who have worked on all this. You will not get everything but most and foremost, so 50% to 60% of the time when I send across the resume, my first three priorities would be this. If I actually get experience level from this three part, all right? Now, that's the deal. The client knows that, okay, this is a person who is, oh, who is proficient or who has already done work on this particular thing. So the client may give you training on that, but it seals the deal because the client knows that you have already worked on this particular thing. So it's a plus for the client. Next comes contributes to content plan. Now it's a very important thing to understand what is a content or a documentation plan is all about. And it's very important because all these phases that I talk about here, this documentation plan or a content plan should include the kind of information that you are going or the or the, or the kind of life cycle that you are following in, into the content production point of view. Now, if you take a look into this uh, DLC phase that we are talking about here, we the entire, entire aspect of this, there is a content development. There is a content spec, there is a content draft, there is a review, and all throughout this phase that you are creating a structure or creating content, you are doing it through the sort of the content plan. So the next thing for me is to understand that if the person knows the entire life cycle of a content plan. So that may include translation, that it may include the single sourcing methodologies, that may include the, uh, you know, uh, the different levels of reviews that I'm talking about. A development manager, whom generally we report to, uh, we report we in sense technical writing function, function report to, needs to know that this you are very much aware of the planning that will go in order to actually fit that in the SDLC. So that's another important point that I look into it. Now, I would, see, we don't live in an ideal world and we know that most of the times people resumes might actually range from where they probably write accomplishments first, maybe write professional experience part first, but I want to I want to generally when they call me up and my first screening happens because we screen in blue dots first. So that means that we talk to our um, you know uh, participants, uh, we talk to our candidates first and we source them. And uh, just the other day I was talking to a person we were hiring for a business Italian software company, uh, software developer. And I was talking to this gentleman over there and he said, uh, and I asked him a question and I said, are you, how many years of experience will you have in MFC or C Sharp? And he said, well, it seems like you are interviewing me. The idea, well, with all due regards, I don't want to send resumes to a client where the client comes back to me and says, Rashid, you did not understand the requirement. So it's very important for us that the candidate that we send from Google's consultancy services should understand and should map it to the requirement. Next thing comes is industry standards on DITA XML. DITA has been there for the last 15, 20 years now. I mean, at least 15 plus years, 10 plus years now. And uh, the Darwin Information Typing Structure, Structure Authoring, XML, more and more number of organizations in technical publication standards, they moved to Structure Authoring. And uh, 
even if they are not doing structure authoring, they would expect the professionals joining are using data and all that. So at that point of the time, probably in all the scenarios that I'm talking about, I might have some questions that how do you implement data or how do you implement an unstructured documented or structured doc unstructured sorry document to a structured document. A little bit of experience and because I have spent relatively 10 years in tech writing industry and uh, the related industry, I'm pretty much aware of what happens. So some sort of an experience that my fellow uh, colleagues in my company have, it helps us to understand what kind of a level. It is also something that you should understand and I will come and map it up with uh, the tools part also. There is something that we need to understand, it's called working knowledge and exposed to. Because a lot many times people think that knowing the uh, terminology or knowing the standards is good enough for you to actually get a job. That's not the thing. Uh, if I say that I know data, then there is a question that, okay, what do you know of data or how much you rate yourself in data? What are the XML based tools you implement data? Um, how do you write a data topic? How, what are the data maps? How would you, how would you set up the framework of data? So we are, we have come into a stage right now. I would like someone to tell me what you do plainly from a perspective of understanding requirement or a design, how you create the top topic maps. How is a data project different from any other project? That's a very good question, and that is something we need to know. And finally, what I have done is, again, I repeat, I could not put everything uh, everything over here, but some of the most important experience in Framemaker, RoboHelp, Confluence. I put up these three tools because of late, I have been getting a lot and lot of requirements, preferably in this three, in this three tool. Frame has been there for ages now. I call it as something like a cult. Uh, you know, it has achieved a cult status in the hall of tech confluence. Same goes for RoboHelp, and uh, same goes for Confluence also. Now, in the in the in the trainings that we do, we we teach them. We do a pilot project. We teach them, and uh, you know, the various disciplines and all that sort of a thing. I mean, now what happens is out here when someone says, "I have worked." Created. Then what I do is basically I tell them or I ask them a question. Have you created installation, operation, maintenance manual or any other related deliverables that the client is preparing using FrameMaker or RoboHelp and of Confluence? If the, if the user or, or if the competitor is able to say that yes, I have done the same, then I probably would be in a better shape when I send it to the client. And then I want to know how have you done the review process using Framemaker? How do you develop content using Framemaker? How do you write topics using RoboHelp? What is the difference between Framemaker and RoboHelp? Bear it in mind, no client will actually work on Frame and RoboHelp simultaneously together in a project. You may still author and you may still publish online content, but largely clients will go Framemaker plus Dita or RoboHelp plus WebHelp kind of an output on multiple projects. And an organization is looking to hire resources and deploy them at various server projects in professional services group. And he wants an every sort of a, you know, sort of confluence because it's a more of an HTML based kind of an output. You can create easy, uh, you know, uh, simple, easy, responsive kind of an HTML knowledge base using confluence. It's a pretty smart tool that you have. So once I get, I get an idea of how this particular resume and the job description maps up to the resume, this thing, how does it fit in DLC, then what I do, I give a score. Let us say, sometime when I give a score, I assign something out of 10, I say, okay, someone who is done this particular deliverable setup, plus extra, uh, then they have also professional data and XML, Framemaker, RoboHelp, then I give them a scale of, let's say, out of 10, we went thinking about eight, eight or eight and a half. Um, and then I get also people, but all things said and done, you still have something called, which is out of my league, uh, which is out of something we discussed, which is a budget effective. But rough, just to just to coincide in everything. So what we do is that we draw this DDLC structure, we keep it in our mind. Then we have the job description. We find out the workflow that the, the process, the workflow that the um, you know uh, the, the the candidate has gone through in order to create something. It also allows us to know if it is a fake or someone who knows the business because we also get resumes which are. 
uh, where some people have written a couple of things which they have not done. We, we do understand why people write that also. But at the same point of a time, so out of all these things, if I get a tick here, tick here, tick here, and if not on tools, let's say someone works on frame or someone has worked in either one of them, that's, that's still a go. That's still a go because I believe a client is okay unless and until it is a major thing. The client might say, okay, I'm still good enough if you can give me on frame maker or something robo has been all that. The client can, you can still adapt a tool. But on this aspect, I want to know largely from the process and workflow, how do you create, what is the structure you follow, and bear it in mind, this is the kind of interview question that you are going to do. So if you understand the entire life cycle and you map it up into your job description, and if it fits in, fits a candidate who can map this DDLC with all the job description and vice versa, you get a very good candidate. So that's all I have to say in this thing. Please share your feedback with us at curious at bureausconsultancy.com. And uh, I hope this uh, series of webinars uh, uh, provide you with uh, the necessary impetus to strive towards technical com communication fraternity. And also, if uh, there's something that you want me to actually talk about, so do send me an email. Uh, thanks for watching the video. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you. Have a nice weekend.